Welcome to the Tyler W. IQ Software Series. In this session, we'll take a look at importing Kali Linux into VirtualBox. We'll see about clearing some of those pesky initial warning messages, and then we'll get it integrated into our lab infrastructure, get it up and running. Here we go. We're building a lab environment. With VirtualBox, we've already installed PFSense as our router firewall. We want to take a look at the network diagram to see how things come into play. Right now, we've already installed Windows 7, and what we want to do is bring Kali Linux in. We want Kali Linux to be in the same network as our Windows 7 machine. So we have our PFSense router. We have two host-only adapters that connect up to Virtual Switch 1, Virtual Switch 2. We're going to import Kali, and we're going to make Kali connect to the Virtual Switch number 1, so it's in that same network as the Windows 7 machine. Remember that we do have a physical NIC that we're connecting to the internet, and our one of our adapters is actually a bridged adapter to the internet, giving both access to the internet. So now we're going to set this little mini structure up. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is import Kali Linux. So we downloaded earlier a 7-zip version of our archive Kali. We now have decompressed Kali, and it's sitting on our desktop as an OVA. We double-click the OVA, and that's going to launch VirtualBox and then start the import process. There'll be a little wizard that pops up and gives us some information first about where we want to install. And we can actually browse through the parameters that the configuration came with to start with to see if we want to make any changes. I'm going to take a look and uh, it looks pretty good to me. So we'll go with the defaults, which are generally pretty good. And if there's a problem, the install will tell us at some point. So now we want to import. So we'll click on the import button down here and we'll wait a few minutes. Well, we'll wait a few minutes. We'll wait a few minutes. It could be a potentially long time. 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes. And we're going to speed up the process here. There's no reason for us to wait. So while the import process is going on, the virtual box software program is actually building all the files. It's building all the infrastructure that's needed to house the Kali Linux box. When we're done, we will have all three software appliances in there. We'll have Kali, we'll have Windows 7, and we'll have PFSense. Again, normally this would take 20 minutes, so kind of kick back a little bit and wait for it. We've accelerated it again here just to make it a little bit faster. Probably could have done a little bit more with that, but we're okay. Now that the wizard has completed, you can see that we have all three virtual machines installed inside VirtualBox. The Kali Linux box, the Windows 7 box, and the PFSense box. We just installed Kali, so we're going to want to check the settings to make sure that they're okay. So there's our Kali box, it's highlighted. If we click the settings button right now, we'll get the settings configuration for Kali. Click on settings, and we can see right off the bat we have some invalid settings detected. We have some warning messages. The first one is, says USB 2030 is currently enabled, but it's not supported. So we either need to disable USB or pick a lower value here. We'll, we can select USB 1.1, and it does clear the box, so we know we at least support USB 1.1. The second message said we need to use the VMS VGA adapter, which is different than what's currently selected. Well, we'll click on display, and sure enough, VBox VGA is selected. We want VMS VGA, so that clears the second warning. The last warning says that we're using more than 50% of our host computer's memory. So we'll want to go up to the system properties here and bring the slider down into the green for memory allocated to this virtual machine. We'll pick 1024. We've cleared all the messages, so we're doing pretty good. We can say OK here, and that will set those things. Well, you know what? We should check the network to make sure that it's OK as well. So go back to settings, click on the network box here, and ah, it's set for NAT. And we want it to be a host-only adapter connected to that virtual switch number one, which was VirtualBox host-only Ethernet adapter number one. So we get the wrong adapter there, too. So we need host-only adapter, Ethernet adapter. Say OK here, and we should be good to go. We're ready to start Kali Linux. So what we'll do here is we'll click on Kali Linux. We can then go up and click on the Start button, or we can double-click the Kali Linux virtual machine. Either one will start the, the machine for us. Again, this is going to take a little bit longer to start the virtual machine than we show here. We're going to accelerate that process just a little bit so we don't have to wait for all the uh, shenanigans of starting the virtual machine. Here it comes up, loading, 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 username, password. So our username is root for our most of the test machines that you'll, that you'll launch with a password of Tor, T-O-O-R, which is just root backwards. It's not always the case, but in our case it is. 
sign in and we are going to be into Kali Linux. Now there was a little warning message at the top earlier. It came back, says connection failed. Activation of the network connection has failed. Hmm. I wonder why there's. Let's open up the terminal session and see if we have an IP address. See if we even have uh, an, uh, the network stack configured. So we'll type in here IF config. We'll take a look at it and we don't have an IP address. There's that connection failed message. So no IP means that we probably don't actually have the adapter connected co correctly somehow or something's wrong. Well, PFSense is number one, our DHCP server, but the PFSense machine is also that virtual switch that we're connected to. And without PFSense running, we're not connected to anything. So we actually have an adapter. Our network stack is working, but we have nothing to connect it to. Solution, start PFSense first. Let's shut down the Kali Linux box, although we could probably leave it running. I, I like to start everything up in a, in a normal sequence, which means I'm going to start PFSense first. So now that everything is powered off, I want to bring my router, I want to bring my infrastructure device up first. So I'll double click on PFSense or highlight it, select the start button up there, and that will launch PFSense for me. This is going to bring up my router, and the router is going to ultimately have the connection to those virtual switches. Now, the virtual switch is part of VirtualBox, but the way this implementation works, it's reliant on the PFSense machine in there. So now that PFSense is up and running, we should be able to go ahead and restart the Kali Linux box, and we should have the network components that we need. So again, we'll highlight Kali, press the Start button. Kali Linux will come up and boot for us. We have accelerated that process here again because there's no reason to just sit here and watch it boot. So just be aware that your machine is going to take longer. All the steps that we've just done in here will take significantly longer, a minute to five minutes to 10 minutes on your machine. Then 10 minutes might be a little extreme. But once it comes up and runs, we'll log in again with root as our username, Tor, T-O-O-R, as our password. And we should have the network running. How would we know? Well, I haven't seen that pesky error message yet. And then once Kali comes up and runs and we go to that terminal window and we again type in ifconfig in there. If I have an IP address, when I look at the interface, ifconfig, the interface configuration, if I see an IP address in there, then I can be pretty much sure uh, that the network is working. There it is, inet 10.10.138. That would be the address that I'm looking for. So Kali Linux is up and running for us. Again, for our lab environment. There's a lot of other things that can go wrong. You may need to troubleshoot a, bit, a little bit more, but these are the initial errors, the initial settings that we need to make sure are in place so that we have a, a nice smooth start to our lab infrastructure. Again, we want to make sure that PFSense is running first and then launch all the other machines. When we're done, gracefully shut down. We can go in and uh, use the ACPI shutdown function which sends the power shutoff signal to all the machines including PFSense. PFSense will shut down and we've powered off all the devices in VirtualBox and we're ready to close VirtualBox and get it started for the next time. Well that's it for this session where we imported Kali Linux into VirtualBox, cleared those pesky warning messages, found that we had a problem with the network because our router wasn't running, restarted PFSense, got Kali up and running and our lab is ready to go. If you like what we said, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to see all of our videos. And again, thanks for watching.